Hi everyone, welcome back to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and this machine is the Monport 40 watt CO2 laser machine. In this video, I'm going to be doing a full mirror alignment on this machine. Follow along as I take you through step by step to get perfect mirror alignment. Welcome back. I'm really excited about this video. It was something that I thought I was going to dread taking my machine with the mirrors aligned, throwing it out of alignment to create this video for you to show you how to put it in alignment. But during the dress rehearsal yesterday for making this video, uh, the process of realigning the mirrors was actually very simple and it didn't take a whole lot of time. Before we begin, I do wanna talk a few words about safety, starting with the manual that comes with your particular machine. Please read and understand how to safely operate your machine. If you have any questions or doubts how to operate your machine, please contact the manufacturer they would love to point you in the correct direction. And safety-wise, in my opinion, there's no better safety than these safety glasses that come with the machine. If you choose to work on your machine with the cabinet open, we want to protect our eyes against the invisible laser beam. And speaking of guards open, during the making of this video, I'll have my guards either open or removed. That way you viewers at home can see what I'm doing. However, I'd strongly encourage you as you're test firing your laser from the console here that you have your guards closed. With that covered, let's jump into the first part of this video and that is just checking the mirror alignment. I wanna start out with this because I've heard a lot of new laser users, they wanna jump in and start adjusting their mirrors before they've even ran their machine. And on my particular machine, out of the box, I didn't need to adjust anything. And I hear so many times people adjusting mirrors when they didn't need to be adjusted. So let's check out to see if the mirrors even need to be adjusted on a machine. I've got a close up of the machine with the door open. And what I like to do on this quick alignment check is I'll pulse the laser with all the mirrors as close to the laser source as possible. Of course, the laser tube is behind this piece of sheet metal. So we'll pulse the laser once in this position, and then I'll manually move the mirrors over to this position and we'll pulse it again. And what we'd like to see is the dots that appear on our blue painter's tape perfectly aligned. I found in the past when I put the blue tape directly over this laser module that I get a little puff of smoke that comes off the front and then there's some smoke that goes on the backside inside of this cavity and it has a tendency to get some fog on this mirror. So to avoid that, I've been taking some uh, aluminum foil and with the dull side out, I've been putting that on this tape and then I put that over this laser module. And on this control panel, I'm going to turn mine down to about the nine o'clock position. That's the lowest level where my machine will leave a mark on the blue painter's tape. And because I have the cabinet door open, I will have on my safety glasses. And I'm ready to hit the test button. I'm going to pulse this just for a quick second. I saw a little puff of smoke that it left a mark. And now I'm going to move it in this second position and do the same thing. And there's the second mark left on the blue painter's tape. Here's a close up view of the blue painter's tape with the near and far marks on the blue painter's tape. Those two marks line up with each other perfectly. So if this is the case, this machine would not need a mirror alignment. There's no need to make any adjustments. Off camera, I went and I misaligned this mirror. This is mirror number two, and then mirror number one that's in that back corner. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But this, I'm going to do that quick alignment to check once again, where the mirrors are all as close to the laser source as possible. And then the second test pulse, where the mirrors are as far away from the laser source as possible. And do a test pulse. With 
that test pulse complete, I'm going to move over in this area. And this is where I highly recommend that this guard door is closed because I'm now bouncing the laser beam off this back mirror over to this misaligned mirror and I have no idea where that laser beam is going to land over here. Of course, I wanna have it land right on target, but it could go past up in this control panel area as in where the test fire button is. So this is one of the areas that people run into trouble with safety as they hit the test fire button and the laser beam is actually pointed at their hand. So for this, I'm going to close the guard and I'm going to hit the test button. So here's the first test mark that we had. And one of the neat things about using this tape with the tin foil behind it is I can rub over the top and I can see an imprint of the access hole on this laser head module. And I can see that the first mark that we had is heading off to the edge or not even over that access hole. And I can't see the second hole from this position here, which means that laser beam wasn't even hitting anywhere near this laser head. Before I start going into the mirror alignment, we'll first need to free up these adjustment screws with the included wrench with the machine. Before I start making adjustments to these, I like to take a black magic marker and put a little mark on each of these thumb screws. That way I can keep track of how many uh, turns I'm putting on these screws or the amount of adjustment on each of them. And here's a nice clean close up of those black marks I just talked about. When doing the full mirror alignment on the machine, we like to start out with mirror number one and mirror number one is located in this back cabinet area where the CO2 laser tube is located. We'll then move on to mirror number two, which is up on this corner on this movable gantry crane. And then if needed, there is a manual adjustment through shimming that we can make on this third mirror. The general principle on how I set my mirrors up is I start at mirror number one and I'll do a test pulse. I check that on mirror number one just to make sure that I don't have a double beam or a crescent beam that would indicate an issue with my laser tube itself. Once I have that verified, I'll move on to the second mirror down in this area and to get the alignment on that mirror, the adjustments will be made on mirror number one. Now we'll do the same principle as when we did the check is we'll check with uh, the mirror as close to the laser source as possible and then we'll manually move that gantry to move that mirror to the furthest point and we'll do another test pulse. That's ready for a test pulse. And here's that test pulse off of mirror number one. I have one singular hole. Now, if you've got a 40 or a 50 watt laser tube, this mark will be about 1 16th of an inch or roughly about one millimeter. If you have a higher wattage laser tube, like an 80 or 100 or more watts, this dot will be about an eighth of an inch uh, and that's perfectly normal. So I like what I see here. This tells me that my laser tube is good and I'm ready to move on to mirror number two. I've got the main camera set up pointed at the back of the machine so that we can see mirror number one because these are the adjustments that we'll be making based off of the test pattern that we get off of this mirror number two. I'm ready for the first test pulse with the mirror as close to the laser tube as possible. That mark is complete and now I can move this to the far position for the second pulse. And here's a nice close up of that mirror number two. And here's the first test pulse that we had. That one was actually hitting the mirror. The second test pulse right here is hitting the outside frame of the mirror. So that beam in that mirror position isn't even reflecting off the mirror. Now what we want to do is move this second pulse so it lines up with that first pulse. Now we've got our two test dots. We know that that second dot was way off to the right and we wanna bring that over to the left. But what does that mean when we have to adjust this mirror? 
I've seen on the internet, there's all these little cheat sheets on, if you turn this screw one way, it turns the mirror this direction. And if you adjust this screw, it makes an another adjustment. And I don't have that cheat sheet with me all the time. And I just plain forget. So what I like to do is I just visualize that our, first, our second dot that was way off to the right, I wanna bring that over to the left. And to help me relate that to the mirror, I'll use my cell phone for that with the flashlight on. And for that second dot that we made, I'm going to uh, exaggerate and point my flashlight way off to the right. And then I look at my cell phone on what it has to do to bring that second dot to line up with the first one. And that is, this has to turn to the left. So that's where the second dot was and we wanna bring it over to that first dot. So I need to pivot this mirror off towards the left. And to do this, if I adjust this one screw, that will take that mirror and it will turn it to the left in just that one step. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to adjust this screw so that it pushes the mirror to the left. And I'll make that adjustment right now. So I gave that screw about a good half turn. And again, I've got the marks on the back side of those thumb screws so I can keep track of when I make an adjustment, how much of an effect it has over on the mirror. Here's the first test pulse that we had. And here's the second one. Before it was landing way off to the side here, and with that half turn adjustment, we brought that over quite a bit. I need to make just a little bit more of an adjustment. And again, I need that mirror to turn towards the left a little bit more. So I'm going to make that adjustment right now. And with the last set of pulses that I did, here's the first one and here's the second one. And they're just about lined up, up and down. So I think that that's going to be good now. And now I'm going to work on bringing the second pulse up to the first one. And the way that I can get this mirror to pivot or have the bottom kick out to raise that second dot up that little bit will be this adjustment here. And I'll make that right now. So I'm going to turn that screw about a half turn so that it pushes out on the bottom of that mirror raising that dot. And here's our two test dots. Now we've got them where they're overlapping. I've got, basically it's making an eight. And the first hole, the first test spot with the mirror as close to the laser tube as this upper one. And the second one is with the mirror far away and we are still landing a little bit low. So I need to make this adjustment here to kick that mirror out on the bottom to pivot that laser beam up just a little bit. And this needs just a little bit. And we can see here the mark on the back. I give that just a little bit of a turn. And after a couple of more adjustments, I was able to bring that second dot to perfectly align over the first dot. We're ready to check the alignment on the second mirror. And of course, to do that, we're going to see where the beam lands on this third mirror. So the procedure for this again, will be we'll do a test fire in the near position and another test fire in the far position. And just like with that first mirror, we're going to more than likely end up with two different dots from our test and what we want to do is bring this far dot in alignment over the first dot. Now I've got the first test pulse made on the blue painters tape but I know that this mirror is out of alignment and for this far away test pulse I don't know where the laser beam is going to land. Of course ideally I want it on the blue painters tape but it might actually come out of the cabinet and cut across here right where my finger will be on the test fire button. This is where I'm going to, even for this video, reinstall this top guard.
with the guard safely reinstalled, I can confidently do the second test pulse and know that I'm not gonna have a stray laser beam hit my hand. Let's see if we can find out where that second spot landed on the blue painter's tape. And I think I've only got one mark on the blue painter's tape. When I can only find one mark on the tape, especially when I'm in the far away position, I'll use a piece of black construction paper and I'll put this in the area of the target. I'll then close the guard again and do another test fire. And then from this, I'll be able to tell if I'm somewhere in the general area. And now that I'm on the, this side of the machine, I can clearly see that here is where that test beam hit. And that's way high. So just like I kind of predicted where this was heading up here, this is high enough where that may have exited the cabinet and been in line where my hand and arm was over in this other area. And just as before with our two test pulses, I am the first one I'm landing on target about where I should be. But when I'm in this second position, we were way high. So once again, I'm gonna grab my cell phone and pretend that my flashlight is pointing at that second pulse that we sent over here and that was way high. So what I need to do to bring that second pulse back into alignment to the near pulse is I need to pivot that mirror so that it turns in this direction. And another way to take a look at that is I can use a piece of paper with a pen or pencil going through it where the paper is the mirror and the laser beam would be the pencil. And with that second pulse being way up high, I can point the pencil at that. And now I have a visualization of what this uh, pretend mirror should do. And in order to bring the laser beam down, that mirror needs to pivot down. And to make that adjustment of the mirror pivoting down, I'm going to go to this bottom screw and I'm going to adjust that to allow the mirror to pivot down. And if I'm finding that I'm running out of adjustment on my mirror in this corner, uh, the other way to get the mirror to pivot down is I can take the two upper screws, the second screw is hidden behind this guard here a little bit, I can turn the screws and I can push the top of the mirror out and that will make the mirror pivot down as well. And with the adjustments made to this mirror number two, I'm ready to do two more test fires on this blue painter's tape. And that looks like we either have both uh, laser beam dots perfectly aligned or we're still completely missing the painter's tape altogether. I'm gonna grab another piece of black paper and put that over the top and do another test fire. Well, that really does look like it was over that same spot once again. Now those are both looking like they're lined up pretty good and I'm going to rub my finger over that tape so that I can see an impression of the hole into that laser module directly behind. And now that I'm zoomed in, I can see that it is now hitting the hole. It is above center just a little bit. And ideally on this one, I really do wanna hit the center of that so that the laser beam goes through the focusing lens that's located down here, perfectly centered. Now, this is kind of one of the things on the K40 frame size CO2 laser machine that they really don't have a good adjustment for that on this laser head. Let me remove this blue painter's tape so that we can kind of see what this looks like. Now, on this laser head, we've got the lens down here and then a screw and collar here that screws into this upper piece. So we've got one, two, three pieces for this laser module all together. Now the only way to move this up without affecting the alignment would be to unscrew these and put some shims between this upper piece 
and this mounting bracket. And I'll have uh, some shim washers listed in the description down below that you can take a look at. So everything looks like it's in alignment. The very last thing that I'd like to do is go back to that first alignment check where I had the laser head in the near position. I'll do a test fire here, and then I will move this to the far position and do the second test fire. And we'll wanna see that the two laser dots are lined one on top of another. Everything looked good in that last check that we did. The last thing to do is tighten down all these little nuts that keep all of our adjustments safely locked in place. And again, this is where I like having that black mark on the back side of this screw. And I wanna make sure that I hang on to this screw while I very gently tighten down this nut. As I tighten down this nut, it's gonna have a tendency to wanna to turn the screw with it and it's gonna throw everything out of alignment again. And this is kind of the rewarding part of doing this alignment is knowing everything looks good and I can tighten down all of these nuts on the mirror adjustment. I'm gonna go around and catch all of these adjustments on mirror number two and then catch all of the adjustments on the mirror number one. I have all the nuts on the thumb screws on mirror number two tight and mirror number one located just on the other side. And I went and already did that final mirror check of doing the test pulse in the near position and that second test pulse in this far position. And I've got perfect alignment on my blue painter's tape. I'm really happy with the results that I got. Here's a close up view of that last and final check. It is very important to uh, check this one last time once all of those nuts are tight. Every once in a while I find that while I'm tightening up the adjustment screws on the mirror that it does shift the mirror a little bit and I have to go back and make one tiny little adjustment in usually on this mirror and not mirror number one that's located in the back there. Well, I really like the results that I got and it didn't take a whole lot of time. I actually spent more time moving the cameras around and thinking of a clear and concise way to explain what I was doing. A real quick recap of what I did was I checked mirror number one just to check the laser tube back here Again, I'm looking for that one nice round dot coming directly out of the laser tube and not a split beam where I'd have two faint laser dots or a crescent moon. Again, if you're getting that out of your laser tube, chances are you have something wrong and you'll need to contact the manufacturer. From there, I just moved that mirror number two from the near position with a test dot and the far position with a test dot and then from there, I wanna take that second test dot and move it in the direction to bring it in alignment to the first test dot. My preference for bringing that second dot far away position in alignment to that close position, that first test tiring dot, is that whatever direction that second dot is off by in the largest distance, that's the dot that I bring back into alignment to the first dot. So an example would be uh, over here, if I've got the first firing dot here, but the second firing dot is high and off to this direction, I wanna bring that dot down first so that it lines up at least in line with the first test dot. And then from there, I'll bring it back over I find this is the simplest way for me to bring the two dots in alignment is just moving that dot in one direction. And once it's pretty close to the first dot, I'll move it in the second direction until they're perfectly in alignment. I hope that this video helps you out. I hope that it made sense for you. If it did, please consider leaving this video a like or subscribing to the channel or ring that notification bell. Doing any number of those things really helps this channel out. If you find that you're still having some issues, please leave a comment down below. Maybe some of the other people watching this video can gleam some information for you. Along with, if you found some parts that you thought 
there's a better method. I'm always open to learning and sharing new and better methods to create a better user experience for you using the Monport 40 watt laser machine. Once again, I've had a lot of fun making this content for you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.